Hello, everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sid City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today, I'm going to continue on the uh, subject of terminology and words. Uh, let's get it right. Uh, if, if you didn't see the last two episodes on this topic, uh, they're already uploaded on my YouTube ch channel, uh, Sin City Preacher. I hope you will, will go back and watch those. I think this is a very important subject because um, so often we see that uh, um, there's certain terminology that is misused in, in, uh, by professing Christians, and sometimes they're mis not only misused, but uh, unfortunately very much misunderstood. So uh, we've already gone through quite a few of these words and terms, and now I'm going to pick up now with another one, uh, and the first word, I'll discuss today is repent. Um, now, the, the problem with the word repent in terms of uh, the Bible and salvation is that um, uh, it probably the vast majority of people who uh, see the word repent uh, the first thing that comes to their mind is sin and that somehow repenting in the scriptures for salvation is you must somehow repent of your sins. But uh, in the Bible, and I'm a, what, what uh, Joe Byron coined as a, a King James firstist, uh, and rather than a King James onlyist, and I was a King James onlyist for 25 years. And I still want to look at the King James first, uh, but I find it helpful to look at uh, other translations sometimes if, uh, if I'm not really sure about the King James. But uh, in the King James version of the Bible, um, we will not find the term repent of your sins anywhere. It doesn't exist. Now, the idea of repenting of sins is, is uh, not a bad thing. Uh, to want to uh, uh, desire to you know to to be sorry for your sins that's contrition uh, to um, regret your sins these that's this is all fine and there's nothing wrong with it uh, to even uh, desire to want to get control of your sins and to sin less or even to stop sinning completely these are all worthwhile efforts uh, except that through our efforts we can't do it anyway because uh, the scripture says that we all fall short of the glory of God. This, God has set a standard of perfection, and Jesus gave us an example. He lived a sinless, perfect life, and he was perfect, and we all strive to be perfect, but we all fall short. We, we all have, uh, we're all sinners in, to varying degrees and a variety of kinds of sins. Um, so if man thinks that somehow he can somehow get control over his sin and no longer sin again, uh, he's deluded. Um, so the important thing to understand is that uh, even though uh, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior, we, uh, we receive salvation, eternal life, and we receive the Holy Spirit of God living inside us. And the Holy Spirit is attempting to transform us. I think if you see Romans 12, 2, it says, be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And our mind and our, our, our thoughts, our minds, our actions, our desires, the Holy Spirit is transforming us. But um, nobody uh, really gives in to the Holy Spirit 100%. And, you know, the term we discussed uh, and previously was uh, surrender surrender your life to Jesus. Well, you don't surrender your life to Jesus if you get saved, but after you get saved, uh, uh, surrendering your will over to the Holy Spirit and listening to the Holy Spirit and, and attempting to follow the teach the promptings of the Holy Spirit, this is a worthy uh, worthy goal to, to strive for, uh, but we, we cannot stop sinning and we cannot completely give, uh, give over our will to, to God uh, on our own. We need the Holy Spirit to do the transforming. So that's the first thing we need to understand about 
sin and man's situation with sin. But when we when we hear the term repent, um, most people think it's referencing sin. So that's the first thing I want people to understand is no, uh, when it talks about repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the word repent, uh, I have a, a playlist titled uh, Words Have Meanings. And uh, think words like believe and grace and repent. Uh, you know, we, we, we have videos that go into great detail showing you the, the actual um, literal translations, the meanings of the words. And the word repent just simply means to change your mind. And when, if you want to repent in order to get saved, uh, what is required of you is not that you, you change your mind about sin or you get control over your sin or you, you uh, somehow are master of, of your sin. And Well, that's not what repent for salvation is. It's changing your mind about how to get saved. See, the, the world thinks that in order to get saved, uh, we have to somehow through our own efforts, um, please God by either becoming religious, uh, controlling our sins, doing charitable good works. And people think that if they have uh, enough merit, enough personal merit, God will somehow approve of them and accept them and they get to go to heaven. But in Romans 10, 3, it says that uh, man is trying to, uh, attain his own righteousness and that's what the merit system is is trying to uh, work your way to heaven through your own righteousness but scriptures tell us that uh, the righteousness of man is like filthy rags in the sight of God so we need to understand that uh, we, as it says in Romans 10 3 it's not our righteousness that's that's uh, the question the question is Will you put your faith in the righteousness and person and work of Jesus Christ? Uh, and when you do, when you put your faith in him, instead of trying to attain salvation through your own efforts, then because of your faith in Jesus, he imputes his righteousness to you. He gives you eternal life and uh, he's cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. So the important thing to understand about repent is it just literally means to change your mind. And it means to change your mind about how you're going to go to heaven. Uh, change your mind about trying to get through on your own. Instead, you admit defeat and say, I can't do it. I need Jesus to do it. That's the change of mind that is required for salvation. That's the repentance for salvation. Uh, now I'm going to go on to the next word. I, I, I see that uh, Ray is here with me. Uh, and he hasn't said anything to me yet. I don't know who you are, Ray, but if you can hear me, do you want to say anything? Okay. All right, then I'll go on to the next word now. And the next word I have a list here is baptize. Um, there is a, a uh, sect of Christianity that uh, believes that uh, you must be water baptized in order to be saved. And that the concept of uh, being saved by the water is uh, sometimes called baptismal regeneration. In other words, you're regenerated, you're, that, you are born again, your spirit is quick and brought to life, you are a child of God by being wet. That's baptismal regeneration. Uh, the, I think that the, the Pentecostals overall uh, believe in baptismal regeneration. Uh, some uh, Baptists also believe in it, that you must get wet. You're not saved until you get wet. Uh, there's, a, there's an uh, opposite group that take another position that's the opposite side of the spectrum, and they say you must stay dry. And these are the Paul Onlyists. Hyper dispensationalists, and um, they argue that you must not get wet because if you if you uh, allow yourself to be baptized, then uh, it's an indication 
that you're not putting your faith in Jesus to save you, but putting your faith in the baptism, in, in a work that you're doing, a religious work that we call baptism. So on one extreme, you have the hyper-dispensationalist says, don't get wet, absolutely. And on the other side, you have the, the Pentecostals. I think that the church, church of God, uh, the oneness people, they, they all seem to believe that, that you, you must get wet. But the, the truth is that when we see the word baptize in the scriptures, there's really two types of baptism that we have to consider. One has to do with water, and the other has to do with the spirit. And uh, uh, the, I think it was John the Baptist was saying that, said that I baptize you with water, but one is coming who's greater than me who will baptize you with the, the spirit. And that's what Jesus does. Uh, he, to, to be saved and have Jesus as our savior, it's not the water that does it, it's the spirit that does it, the spirit baptism. And there are people that think that uh, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is um, indicated by some kind of um, charismatic utterances, like speaking in tongues. And they think that uh, when you speak in tongues, that's the sign that shows that you were baptized in the spirit. But that what they don't really understand is that uh, when it comes to the Holy Spirit and a believer, you have, I guess, basically three three things that uh, we need to say about that. One is that uh, as soon as someone puts their faith in Jesus and they res the Holy Spirit comes into them, that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit right there. Now, when someone does that, they don't have to get wet to do it. And, and uh, they don't they don't have to speak in tongues to indicate that it, it just happened. Uh, what I object about these uh, these different factions is that some people are imposing water on you to get saved. And some people are imposing tongues on you to prove that you really got saved. And they're they're all wrong in these regards. Um, so when you put your faith in Jesus, when you repent and say, I no longer believe in myself. I don't believe in my own ability to get to heaven through religion, through personal merit. I've changed my mind. I've repented and I believe in Jesus to save me now. I'm trusting him. At that instant, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into you. Now, in the Old Testament, you have many times where uh, examples of people who were filled with the Spirit. And they, they were filled with the Spirit temporarily in order to be a prophet, to do some kind of miracle, or to go and do some kind of a mission God had uh, them do. Uh, and that's, that was a temporary thing where the Spirit would enter them and then they would, it would, he would not be there permanently. Um, but the, the baptism of the Spirit is something that's, that's new, new, that started at, at Pentecost. And, you know, the hyper-dispensationalists, the Paulonius, they argue that the, um, uh, the church did not start until the Apostle Paul, Paul came on the scene. I agree, I agree with that. And who is speaking? Ray Kozma. Uh, it's Ray? Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, Ray. Uh, what, yeah. do, you, do you agree with everything I've said up to this point? No, yes, I do. I okay, very good. Have I met you before, Ray? First time I met you there. Okay, all right. Well, and you you read the rules of the hangout. You you agree with the the uh, the uh, basic tenets that are in the statement of faith? Yes. Okay. All right, then I will call you Brother Ray. And uh, so I'm glad you spoke up. Uh, I saw that you were there, but I I don't know if your microphone was not working or you yeah. just. What's I was trying to get my I was trying to get my mic working because I wanted to talk to you before, but uh, I'll be I just got it going now. It's pretty poor though. Okay, all right then. So, uh, is there anything I've said so far about 
the repenting and baptism. Uh, there's more to be said about baptism, but but uh, is there anything I've said so far that uh, you would like to expound upon or question? Yes, it's, I've learned over the years that it's all to do with the the light and the darkness. The light, the light nurtures the defenseless, but the darkness it harms the innocent and it harms the defenseless. Oh, I'm having trouble with the sound. I'm sorry. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I hear you fine. When you're talking, what I'm doing is I'm muting my microphone so we don't get feedback. And that's uh, when I'm talking, you should mute your microphone. Uh, do you know how to mute it at the top? You have these icons where the camp microphone is there and you click on it. No, um, there's a button on it. Is that yeah, you, you have some icons of a person's head, a microphone, a camera. So ah, yes, I see. Yeah. Yes. If you, if you left quick click once on the microphone, it, yeah. it uh, mutes your microphone. So when someone else is talking, it's good to mute your microphone. Otherwise, we get feedback. But uh, so, yeah, I, I heard what you were saying. Do you want to continue? Do you have anything else to add to that? Okay, I'll go on then. So the things that I think are important to understand about this uh, baptism is that it's a big mistake when people read through the Bible, uh, <clears throat> the New Testament. When we read through there and we see the word baptized, baptism, baptized, um, if you are automatically thinking that when it says baptized, that it's referring to water baptism, you're really going to get in a lot of trouble with your doctrine. Uh, what you should do as a, as a rule of thumb when you look at that word in the scriptures is do not assume that it's water baptism unless the context specifically states it's water or the context leads you to say, conclude it must be water they're talking about. If it doesn't say that it is water of baptism, then assume that it's spirit baptism instead. And if you use that rule as you're reading the scriptures and see the word baptize, it's going to really make more sense to you. And you'll be, I think, correct the way you understand it. But when it comes to the, the spirit baptism, the uh, you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit happens the moment you put your faith in Jesus. And then you also have, and from that point on, you have what the scripture calls the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That means once the Spirit comes in you, it stays, it lives inside you. So the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the Spirit of God lives inside Brother Ray, Brother Luke, all those who put their faith in Jesus. And, and then we have what scripture says, sealed with the Spirit. That means that once it comes inside and then lives in us and indwells in us, he's sealed. He will not leave us ever, no matter what. Uh, if we get involved in sin or we have a crisis of faith or whatever happens, the, the Spirit will not leave us. So these are thir certain concepts I need to understand. The baptism of the Spirit, the indwelling of the Spirit, the sealing of the Spirit, and the last one I will talk about is the filling of the Spirit. And the filling of the Spirit uh, is um, like before I start a broadcast, bef uh, you know, before I do any kind of ministry works, uh, I pray the Lord fill me with the Holy Spirit. And that just means empower me. Holy Spirit, give me power and help me get through, help me do this. And uh, filling of the Spirit, as I said, in the Old Testament happened many times with prophets where the God, the Spirit of God, would come into them, give them power to do a, a mission or a miracle. And But they, they were not permanently indwelled and sealed with the Holy Spirit as we are today. Um, Brother Ray, anything you want to add to that before we go on? I agree with everything you have said. I've got a bad cold. I hope you can understand me. But I agree with everything you say. And um, when we're baptized with Jesus Christ, he is in our heart forever. And uh, I've learned over the years just how powerful the Lord is. Every prayer that I've ever asked the Lord to do, he has just helped me, like, again and again, with my children, with my wife, with my job, everything. Every time I've asked, prayed to the Lord, for help, the prayers have always been answered for me. But um, I find that I've had a lot of darkness in my life, the earlier part of my life, where I didn't know the Lord. 
And I had an NDE about the age of 26. I was a drunk. I've lost my previous marriage. I've lost my wife. Um, and I had an NDE and I actually, um, I was floating above my body and then I was pulled into a room and then I met Jesus and he talked to me and he told me we all have a purpose in life. We we're all here for a reason. And then he sent me back. And when I awoke in the recovery room, I awoke in darkness compared to where I was before. It wasn't heaven where I was before. It was just a room. But it was so beautiful that it was it was home. It, it was, and I felt love like you wouldn't believe. And I so really want to go back there. But I um. This is darkness. Everywhere I look is darkness. And you have no idea. Oh, you do have an idea, but Jesus is our saviour. He, he, he is here to save us. His kingdom is here. He is for us. And he, if you ask him, he will save you. He will save you whoever's listening to this. Listen. And be careful of the darkness. The darkness will invade you. It will stop you going to God. And you'll be stuck on this earth instead of being sent where we're supposed to go, where God wants us to go. God wants to have a relationship with us. And baptism is a way of cleansing our old sins, as you said. It's a way of cleansing us. It's a way of uh, enabling us to, to go on, to see God. We are so unrighteous. Um, when I was with, with him, there was two angels, and the look they had on me was total disgust. They were looking at me like, uh, because I was an unrighteous sod, and they, I was vile in their eyes, but, but they, were, they were ordered to put up with me, and he was putting up with me. But, uh, but the things he told me was that we all have a purpose, and we're here, and we will go on. We will serve God, and uh, one way or the other. God uses the good and the bad. Uh, if we're bad, he'll use the bad. If we're good, we'll use the good. If we serve God, we'll serve God. If we don't serve God, he'll still use us. But uh, the thing is, we've got to serve God. We've got to serve God. Serve the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. I really like your, what, this video. I really like talking on it. It's really brilliant. I just love being with you. Anyhow, that's all I got to say. Thank, thank you, Brother Ray. Uh, 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 where do you live? Or you sound like you're European, maybe from England. Uh, Australia. I'm from Australia. Australia. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, Australia, New Zealand, England, uh, Ireland, those countries, I know that, that you can see a, a distinction in this uh, accents, but to me, they all sound kind of similar, so I, I, don't, I can't differentiate that well. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to go on to the next word, which is a word that actually that relates to what you're just saying. The, the next word on the list I have here is the word death. And I think that uh, well, the reason I've chosen these words is because uh, I believe that these words are um, many times greatly misunderstood and, and caused, uh, there's an awful lot of confusion uh, regarding these words and terms. So... Uh, we talked about repent. We talked about baptize. Now, by the way, before I go on and talk about baptize, uh, the water bat, the spirit baptism is what um, uh, happens to every believer. But the water baptism, I, I'm in the middle position. I'm not a, uh, a, a, a Pentecostal that says you've got to get wet to be saved. I'm not a, a Paul onlyist that says you've got to you've got to stay dry. Don't get wet. I'm one that believes that. We're saved when we put our faith in Jesus, even before we get wet. But by getting water baptized, it's, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to publicly go before our family and our friends and say, I'm not ashamed. As Jesus said, don't, don't be ashamed of me before men or I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. So when we go in water baptism in front of all everyone who knows us, we're acknowledging that I, I'm not ashamed. I put my faith in Jesus Christ. And when I get submerged in the water and come out, it's it's a, uh, a symbol of, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the, and the resurrection that's promised to me through Jesus Christ. So I do think that water baptism has its place. 
I don't think it's required for people, but I think it's advisable and I would urge everyone to get water baptized. But if someone never got water baptized, I, I'm not one that would say, no, oh, they're lost. They never got wet. Uh, I'll go on to the next word, unless you want to say anything about that, Brother Ray. Yeah, um, the Jews did not know what uh, John the Baptist was doing. Um, to them, uh, baptism was mutzvah. It was um, they they had baths, cleansing baths. They uh, it was totally foreign to them to be baptized. Um, to them. Uh, Sin was something you went and sacrificed to. You sacrificed animals to, and your goods to, and your money to. Yeah. Um, but when Jesus come along, he said, "No, this is in the way. I am the light, and uh, what you do is uh, you obey my commands." Which there are forty six commands, um, which is to well, the first one is love one another as I have loved you. Um, anyone who doesn't do this. Uh, is disobeying the Lord. But um, baptism cleanses the spirit. It, it, it is the first start. In, and as you live your life, your spirit is cleansed. It is whole. It is, um, uh, and we go through life uh, being baptized, and then our spirit is cleansed. It, 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 and it gets more cleaner as we go along. And finally, our unrighteousness leaves us, and then we are not a part of the earth anymore. We are spirit. We die. We are spirit, and then we go to God. But um, but without uh, the only way through to God is through Jesus. Um, I'm kind of running out of things to say. <laughs> but uh, my love for God, I, I pray to Jesus all the time. And I can feel him hearing, talking to me. I, I, I can feel him in my soul. And I can feel him uh, guiding me in my life. There are things that happen in my life, disasters, which I know that they're going to be all right because he is with me. And uh, he's with everyone. Everyone on the face of the planet of the earth is with. Even the ones who reject him, he's with. He's there for them all the time that they reject him. Um, Jesus used Judas Iscariot. Um, he had Satan enter him so he could go and betray him because he believed in money instead of believed in, in Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus will use the good and the bad. Um, but to become righteous is not hard. It's just that we have so many things that makes us unrighteous. There are so many temptations in the world for us to be unrighteous. Eventually, after a while, I found all the temptations of the earth had left me. And uh, I am becoming a righteous person. And you are a righteous person, and that's why I like talking to you. And uh, believe in God and believe in the faith that he has given us, the gift he has given us to show us the way. Otherwise, uh, when we die, we will just uh, become nothing to us. But um, my love of no, I've got to stop there, otherwise I've gone for ages. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. Baptism is essential. It is essential to to uh, yeah. Okay. You know. All right, thank you. Uh, the the next word we're going to talk about is something you mentioned. You said you had a near death experience. Yeah. And then, um, I'm not going to talk about near death. I'm talking about actual death experience and what what is death. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that death is a uh, separation from God. And then uh, they say that, so other people say that uh, death uh, is um, that you no longer exist, uh, or death is your body dies, but your soul goes on and lives, lives because your soul is immortal. But I've got a, a playlist uh, titled um, uh, Conditional Immortality, no, 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 no. What is it called? Um, uh, uh, the uh, eternal torment versus eternal death. And that uh, gets us to the subject of hell, too. But the idea that so when someone dies, that um, it simply means that they have been separated from God, but they still exist. 
uh, is uh, is what most people think. Well, we when people die, they continue to exist. Uh, it's just the question of where will they exist in heaven or will they exist in hell? But they're going to exist somewhere, and that's the the common uh, in, uh, viewpoint. Now, I held that viewpoint. It's it's kind of a traditional viewpoint. It's a majority viewpoint. Most people who uh, identify themselves as Christians believe in, in that idea. But in the, the videos I did on this subject, on that playlist, eternal death versus eternal uh, torment, uh, it, it, it sh I show in there that uh, the, a man is not born with an immortal soul. The, nowhere in the Bible does it say that um, man innately, universally, has an immortal soul. It doesn't say it. In fact, it says quite the opposite. Uh, there's yeah. there's the first, there is a verse that says that uh, we are mortal and we must put on immortality. So it says that we are, we are all born as mortals. That means that you will die and you'll be dead. And you're not going to continue living unless you receive immortality. And you, the way you receive it is through faith in Jesus Christ. So to me, uh, the idea that uh, people think that uh, uh, when you die, uh, you, it, it simply means it's e eternal separation from God. And again, uh, I said in my, uh, on my ch rules for the hangout and my statement of faith, I say, there are certain core doctrines of Christianity that are of utmost importance, that are essential, that we cannot compromise on. Then there's about a hundred other questions uh, that that we don't necessarily have to agree upon. We can we can debate them, and as long as we're respectful with each other, and uh, you know, I'm we may be right and wrong on a lot of things, but this is a, something that I've changed my mind on over the years, and and uh, I don't believe that death is you're eternally separated from God. I believe that you you no longer exist, and uh, I'll talk more about eternal torment and hell and annihilationism later. But uh, what is your position on that, brother? Jesus um, said that um, no one will actually stay in hell. Eventually, they will all get out of hell. We end up in hell. Um, but I, death is not uh, when we die. Um, when we go to heaven, it's not life. It's not eternal life. It's actually uh, it's not life and it's not death. It's actually something else. Um, what I saw, everyone was wearing robes. They were you know, it was extremely beautiful. I didn't go to heaven, I didn't go to hell, but um, what I saw was something incredible. That it was a place that we were supposed to be in. It was a space, a place that we were we were meant to, it was home. It was our home. It was a place that would be made for us. Um, it was just an environment that Jesus created so he could talk to them. And um, he didn't call himself Jesus, by the way. He called himself Yuzul. I don't know what Yuzul is, but... Um, uh, Yusula, Yusula, I can't pronounce the word, but I can remember it. But um, I, um, I know one thing, after a while, uh, my own righteousness he couldn't stand and I had to go back because I had, still had to be cleansed. And uh, I, I set out to cleanse myself from then on. But the thing was that I had such so many bad habits. I was ex-harming, I was uh, drinking, I was uh, doing all sorts of horrible things. That I um, go to nightclubs and yeah, you know, but I had to cleanse myself of all these feelings uh, that I felt, all these things that I was doing. Um, I was envious of other people, uh, fast cars. Um, I used to make a lot of money, but um, I don't anymore. But um, but I I know one thing that. It's not life that we, we're going to. It's something else. It's some, it's a place that we are meant to go to. And then uh, even the ones in hell, I think Jesus wants us out of there to serve him. The one, if, we, if they go in, anyone goes into hell, uh, they will come out of hell and they will serve Jesus Christ um, because he told us that. Um, he also said that uh, no Jew has ever been to heaven. I, I, I don't know about that one. Anyhow, I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> okay. But all I know is the Holy Spirit, we are spirit, and the Holy Spirit is trying to guide us to uh, fulfill these aims. 
All right. Well, I have a, a playlist that's actually 50 hours long titled Heaven. And we, we some people say, well, uh, if I, how could you talk about heaven for 50 hours? If you ask most people about heaven to talk about it and what they think of it or know about it, uh, it would take them 30 seconds or a minute. And we talk for, about heaven for 50 hours. And there's an awful lot, but uh, much of what we said in the 50 hours were speculative. We tried to base upon scriptures and come to conclusions based upon what we could get out of the scriptures. Uh, there is a lot that you can um, get from the scriptures uh, to understand heaven. Uh, but uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure that I have this perfect understanding of heaven and what it's going to be like in eternity. Um, you, you have had this near-death experience that I haven't had, and I, I, I wouldn't uh, question that unless you, you told me something in that experience that contradicted Scripture. But uh, I, So I can't, I can't identify with it because I haven't had that experience. But I, I, the question is, the next question is, is etern the term eternal life. Uh, the reason I've mentioned eternal life is not regarding the question of how we will live in in eternity. Uh, is it uh, are we going to be somehow disembodied spirits? Will it be some other dimension? Will it be on the earth with with uh, glorified eternal bodies? Uh, th these things are interesting, and and uh, I have opinions on it, but that's not what I'm asking now about eternal life. Well, I'm, uh, a lot of people are will argue that. Uh, uh, a person could lose their salvation if they uh, lose their faith or get involved in sin or something. And and I, I've spent an awful lot of time over the years um, arguing against that and, and proving that we have eternal security. We cannot lose our salvation. But one of the things that is most obvious uh, in this, in this uh, argument would be when we use the term eternal life, like it says in... Uh, uh, Let's say, for example, uh, Romans 6, 23, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you have on one hand, you have one option would be death and the other option is eternal life. So will you die or will you have eternal life? And so when it says eternal life, a person, if they receive the gift of eternal life, because it is eternal life, it could never be lost because otherwise it, it, it would be a contradiction of terms. It's no longer, it wouldn't be eternal, the life that you've actually received, if it could be lost. So that's one of the things that I think is greatly uh, misunderstood by a, a large percentage of professing Christians is the idea that, oh yeah, you get eternal life, but you could lose it. And to me, that's an oxymoron. It's a contradiction of terms. Uh, brother, what's your comment on that? It's not life um, as we know it. Uh, the spirit that we have in our body now is a spirit that goes, is there. Can, can you get me? And um, hang on, this is Justin Sam. Um, the spirit we have now is a spirit that, and what happens is an unrighteous spirit, if we live a life where we have an unrighteous spirit, where all we do is um, go against God's, uh, Jesus' commandments. Um, what use are we to Jesus? I mean, if we do this, if we, if we go and live our lives where we, we are envious of other people, where we are a covenant of, of someone's things, where we um, find fault with others, where we uh, say that you are not a, I am more holier than you or thou, or um, so, someone says, well, you know, you haven't been reading the Bible lately. You know, it makes people feel guilty. It's it's not what Jesus wanted. Jesus wanted to make our own choice, our own, you know. But I agree that um, spiritual uh, death is blackness. There is blackness in this light, which Jesus often talked about. The darkness, uh, the darkness is there. Um, with the light, Jesus is the light. Uh, the morning star. I'll, I'll stop talking. I'm, this is early in the morning, by the way. I'm um, I'm just about five o'clock. <laughs>
But um, oh, this is why I got out of bed. Yeah, it's. Uh, I used to talk to a sister in Australia. Her name was Joanne, and I remember that uh, the time difference was uh, tremendous. Uh, here it would be in the morning when she was joining the show, and here it's in the. Uh, and uh, it was the morning. The what day of the week is it there? Are you still there? Yeah, it's Saturday. It's, I had, um, uh, Saturday, the, um, yeah, Saturday. It's uh, Sunday morning there, or Saturday? Saturday, that, Saturday yeah. So here it's, it's, it's here it's Friday afternoon, and there it's Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right, let me go on to the next uh, word here. I have on my list. Uh, I just want to get a cup of coffee, and I'll come back. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look on the uh, uh, Google Plus page here for a minute and see if anybody is there paying attention or asking questions or anything. Let me see. Time. All right. Okay, I'm going to go to the next word here. Uh, next word is I'm going to talk about is heresy. And I think what I'll do here is let's look at the actual definition of the word. Let me see. G R E S Y. A P R E S Y. Okay. And it says heresy is a belief or opinion contrary to orthodox religious doctrine, especially Christian. So let me say it again slowly. Belief or opinion contrary to orthodox, orthodoxy. So um, the word heresy and the word heretic are, are used an awful lot in, in, uh, on YouTube um, among, among people I know uh, who I've, I've associated with uh, all these years in Christianity uh, locally and internationally, uh, a lot of people use that word heresy and heretic. And in, in some ways, according to that definition, then I would say that I hold, hold some heresies according to that definition because it says an opinion uh, or belief that's contrary to orthodoxy. Now, for example, Orthodoxy, or the traditional, or the majority viewpoint on hell, is uh, that people suffer in hell eternally. It's called eternal torment, and I don't hold to that position. I used to. Um, so, and I have, a, as I said, a playlist uh, titled Eternal Death versus uh, Eternal torment. So watch that playlist. There's a lot, an awful lot of teaching on there to, to show why I believe the way I do now. But according to that definition, because my position is a minority position, someone could rightly say, "Well, that's heresy. That's not orthodoxy. That's not the majority viewpoint." But I think it's important to understand that the majority viewpoint is oftentimes wrong. I mean, first of all, just look at the world today. Uh, the majority of the world don't even profess faith in Jesus. Uh, there's over 7 billion people in the world, and there's 2.2 .2 
that identify themselves as a Christian in some in some way. So therefore, um, if if we're going to go with a majority, we have to say that Christianity must be wrong, since there's a minority of people that hold that position. So another, and even with the 2.2 billion that identify themselves as Christians, within that large population of people, the majority of them do not hold to the Bible as their source of truth for Christianity. 1.2 billion of them believe in Romanism, Roman Catholicism, and, and uh, the traditions of the Roman Catholic cult. I have a playlist called Roman Catholicism Debunked. I hope you'll watch because it'll teach you the origins and false teachings of Roman Catholicism. Uh, but so out of 2.2 prof professing Christians, uh, a very small percentage of them go to the Bible for their source, their understanding of what Christianity is. I also have a playlist called Biblical Christianity. Christianity according to what the Bible says. And even a lot of the people who say they go to the Bible for their answers, a vast majority of them do not hold in the doctrine of salvation is a free gift. We get by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. The majority of people who even say they're biblical Christians are not because they, they, don't, they believe that salvation it must be earned through personal merit. You believe in Jesus, and then you do your own works, and if it's good enough, then... You're saved. So, uh, my point is simply that uh, if if you want to follow the majority, you're quite often going to be in the wrong camp because the majority is is not necessarily the right answer. Uh, so, but that's how the word heresy is determined. Heresy is a non-majority position. You are not holding orthodoxy, tradition. Or the majority position. So when it comes to eternal torment, I'm not orthodox. When it when it uh, comes to uh, say, oh, there's there's a few other things too. I don't need to go into all of them. But there's a, a few positions I hold that are not within that majority position. So it would be heresy according to that definition. And then we have a term that we find in the scripture called damnable heresy damnable heresy now I believe a person could be wrong about a lot of things in fact in my statement of faith and the rules for a hangout I say we must agree with these core doctrines of Christianity and these are these doctrines Jesus is eternal God Almighty manifest in the flesh of the Son of God salvation is a free gift we get through faith alone in Christ alone no religious work is required and, and once we receive the gift, it's irrevocable. We can never lose our salvation for any reason. Uh, Jesus died for our sins. He was buried. He rose from the dead on the third day. These are things that are is essential for us to understand and agree on these essentials. And yet there's a uh, hundred other theological questions that are important in varying degrees and very interesting. Uh, and yet we don't have to agree on all those things. Our salvation does not hinge upon it. Our Christianity does not hinge upon it. Uh, so, but if someone does not agree with these basic core doctrines of Christianity, that would fall under what the scripture calls damnable heresy. The heresy is so serious that you will end up in hell because, because you don't get th that part right. Um, I don't know if uh, Brother Ray is, is back for this coffee or not, but if you've been listening and you're back, I'll give you an opportunity. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. Did you hear what I said about heresy? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're true. You can commit heresy just by um, going against what uh, Jesus' commandments. Um, if you don't love others, if you don't respect others, you are going against Jesus' commandments. Uh, if you harm or hurt or harm the innocent or uh, pick on the defenseless, you are going against Jesus' commandments. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And plus the other 46 commandments, what I won't go into. But um, if you, that's the main one. It's the main thrust of it. And the, uh, when you mentioned Cal uh, the Catholics and their Roman doctrine, they went totally against all that. 
um, they picked on the innocent. They uh, they were more like Satan worshippers than um, you know believing in Jesus Christ, even though they used Jesus Christ's name. But um, yeah, heresy is uh, if you go against Jesus Christ. But church sometimes church doctrine I've discovered in some churches goes against Jesus's commandments. Um, I've, I've found this in a few churches. Um, I've, I've walked into one church and they were speaking in tongues, but tongues were given to, to the disciples so they could speak to every single person on the face of the planet, no matter what language they spoke. And yet these guys are speaking this Ghibli book, which is uh, someone's got to interpret and understand it. Um, and to me, it was demon speak. And uh, of course, I just walk out. But um, I mean, tongues were given to the disciples so they could yeah. So they could so they could talk to everyone. They, they, they could get the message of God to every single person on the list. Right. The coffee's starting to affect me now. I'll start to get on a roll. <laughs> but um, yeah, I um, heresy. Um, if you go against, uh, you've got to be careful with church, church doctrines. Some of the church doctrines that, that I've seen is unbelievable. They are her heretics. Man. I like your stuff. That was good. <laughs> And I'll stop talking now because I'm all right, very good. Uh, so I personally, uh, I, I try to uh, control my tongue when it comes to pointing the finger and saying heresy, heretic, heretic. Uh, I don't expect people to agree with me on a hundred different theological subjects. Um, some of these other subjects are really quite important and some of them are, are not very important at all but they're all fascinating and it, it, it would be ideal if we could get our, our understanding of all of them uh, understand them correctly and, and get the answer right you know uh, but but I don't know about anybody else watching but uh, I, I'm not omniscient and I'm not infallible so you know I know in the past I got it wrong on a few things over the years and I've learned and 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 uh, been corrected and I suspect even today, in some theological subjects, I probably am still wrong, and I, I hope to be corrected if I am. Uh, but the point the point is that um, uh, I would be very uh, m much in, for liberty and freedom. That's what it, it, it one of the premises of uh, that I am asking everybody to follow is in in uh, essentials unity. Yeah, let's be dogmatic. Let's be rigid on these essentials, and let's unify around the essentials. But in the non-essentials, all the other things, let's offer people liberty and freedom. Let them let's be, let them be free to disagree without pointing at say heretic, heretic. Now, if if they are wrong about the core doctrines, then it is a, such a serious infraction that we should we can say that's heresy. That is damnable heresy. That. It means you will not go to heaven, you will go to hell because you do, do not accept the most basic thing about who Jesus is, what he's done for you, and, and your need for him, your faith in him to go to heaven. And so uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to t make that with the, the heresy the last word for the talk today, and that I'm going to make a few closing remarks about salvation. But uh, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, heresy uh, to me is going against uh, Jesus commandments if we don't if you don't love another human being as, as Jesus loved us you are committing heresy um, and you see this so many times where people are attacking people because they they find them unholy they, they, they find them uh, good um, Jesus uh, went in and talked to prisoners he went and talked to Gentiles um, uh, Paul, Paul, oh, I won't go on to Paul. Um, I'm trying not to go into stuff that's going to take forever to tell you about. But, yeah, I agree. I agree. You've, we've got to stop being a heretic in our own heart. We've got to take the log out of our own eye before we can take that, the, the log out of our own eye before we take the speck out of somebody else's eye. Okay, I say amen to that. Uh, I like to finish with every one of these broadcasts with just a short uh, invitation to the viewers 
uh, an invitation to receive the free gift of salvation. So I'll take just a moment now to, to do that. Uh, Romans 10.3 is such an important verse because it, 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 it tells us two things. One, it says that the, the, the way that man sees it is we got to work our way to heaven. We got to get to heaven through our own righteousness. But it said, but that's not God's way. God's way is I'm not trying to get there through our own righteousness, but put, putting our faith in the righteousness and finished work of Jesus Christ. So uh, I suspect that some people watching this uh, never were taught that, never understood that, but that's what the Bible says. It says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. So salvation is not attained through man's efforts, through striving, through becoming righteous, and then God accepts you because you've done such a good job. So we, do, I, I want everybody to understand that, that, that is, um, that's the way the world sees it, but that's not what the Bible says, and that's not what the Jesus and the apostles taught. So I'm going to ask you, first of all, to set that aside and say, that's reject that. I, I'm not going to try to get to heaven my way any longer. And we talked about the word repent in the beginning, and that means change your mind. No longer believe that you're going to get to heaven through your own efforts. And now you come to this new understanding, a new belief that you're going to put your faith in Jesus. Now, I want everybody to know who he is and what he's done and, and what he's promised. Uh, scriptures say that he is eternal God Almighty who became a man and died for our sins. So he paid for all of our sins and uh, he's worthy of our worship because he's God. He's worthy of our love because he loved us so much he gave his life for us. And then he was buried, and after three days, he raised himself from the dead. He said he would do this as a sign, to, and that's that's the sign so that we can be confident that hey, he does have the power over life and death. He proved it by the resurrection. So now you can be confident, and you can be assured that he, he can give you life. Now, will he do it? Uh, the... The, the scripture says that even when we have no faith, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. The scriptures say that he is faithful. He cannot lie. He cannot break a promise. And he promises you eternal life in the kingdom of God if you put your faith in him. It's a promise. So because it's a promise from God, you can trust it. So basically, to sum it up, I'm saying... Don't put your faith in yourself. Transfer your faith over to Jesus. He died for your sins. He raised himself from the dead. He promises you eternal life if you'll trust him. So trust him completely. Put 100% faith in him instead of putting your faith in religion and yourself. Uh, brother, I'm going to end the broadcast. And I'll let you make a final remark here, and then I'll clo close the live broadcast. Yeah, you put your faith in Jesus Christ because he's the only way to God. Um, the only way through through God is through... Wait a minute. Where are you going? You still going? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, the only way... I've, I've got a little, little uh, cir circle thing spinning in the uh, background here. The only way through Jesus... Uh, the only way through God, to God, is through Jesus Christ and uh, there's no other way. But um, I've found over the years... Pray to God, talk to God, have a relationship with Jesus Christ, through, uh, to, with God through Jesus Christ, and you will. Uh, the angels will serve you. They, they will come down. They will help you. Um, they, they're standing by, waiting to assist you, waiting to do things for you. They want you to be righteousness, and they want to help you. Um, I've had heaps of things happen to me over the years where it involves uh, my children uh, getting hurt, uh, my son's involved in accidents, and the uh, angels have come and actually helped them and saved them, and you know, all for my faith in Jesus Christ. But another thing you've got to understand too, the blackness. Um, anyone who goes and harms another human being, anyone who goes and uh, causes uh, despair or injury to another human being, is serving the darkness, and the darkness is the uh, the evil prince of this world. Um, Islam serves the, serves Satan, and uh, Jesus is the light. And um, whenever is whenever uh, ISIS finds innocence, they will destroy it. Um, whenever they find people who are defenseless, they will they will destroy them and and kill them. 
Um, they've done this over and over again, but they've chopped babies' heads off and things. I won't go into that. But um, Jesus is the light. He is nurturing. He is, yeah. So I'll think I'll finish off here. <laughs> All right. I'm trying not to go. I'm trying not to go into scripture, which is once I get into it, I'll be here forever. <laughs> well, brother, we, 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 we there's plenty of time because uh, I'm attempting to do these uh, broadcasts every day uh, for an hour. So there's plenty yeah. of time to discuss all that in the in the in the weeks, months, and years to come. So, Brother Ray, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to close the live broadcast now, and I hope you can join me again uh, in the future broadcasts. Uh, Brother Ray, well, what thank time? Are, what what time are you on in the morning? Um, I come on at six o'clock Australian time, but I don't know what. Um... Uh, well, I I start at one p.m. Pacific time, USA. And so that would be an hour ago. What what time is it there in Australia? Uh, it's about seven o'clock now. So it, it would be starting at six a.m. your time daily. Ah, okay, fair enough. All right, brother. It works out, well. it works out rather well. The Lord, the Lord helps. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, God bless you, brother. Bless you. Bye now. Bye.